Hello, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to be talking about a game by the name of Silver and Gold. This is uh, designed by Phil Walker Harding, who's been a uh, terrific family game designer over the last few years, published um, in Germany by NSV. There are English rules available on their website, according to the box. I couldn't find them, but uh, the game's relatively simple, and there's a rules translation posted onto Board Game Geek, so the components are entirely language independent. Um, indeed, the, the one word that I think appears on any of them is in English. So, uh, feel free to import this game. Um, the game is a uh, essentially a spatial game where players are going to be racing to fill in all the blocks on uh, island cards, drawing on them with markers, um, trying to be the first person to, or the person who scores the most points over the course of four very short rounds. The game plays between two and four players in easily 20 minutes, has mostly simultaneous play, so it moves very quickly. Uh, I'll take a few minutes to show you how the game plays, and then I'll come back let you know what I think about it. Silver and Gold is a flip and rate game for two to four players, where players are going to be trying to cross off all the squares in various uh, islands in order to score the card. So at the start of the game each player is going to get dealt four islands, keep two, the others will get shuffled back into the deck, they'll also get a score card that looks like this. Um, four new islands will be flipped up. After players complete one of their two islands in front of them, they could draft one of those. Um, and then you'll also take a, um, a deck of these shape cards. So these have various shapes on them. And handily, on this game's round tracker, there is an index of all the shapes that are in that deck. And there are eight different ones, and uh, or I guess eight of them. And over each of the game's four rounds, seven of those cards will be drawn. So one of these shapes won't come out each round. Um, so you never have dead certainty about what's going to come out. So the game's played over four rounds, so essentially there's going to be uh, 28 flips of these cards, each one enabling you to fill in some squares on your island. So, for example, if we flip that card over, we would have this one, two, three in a row. Players could essentially take that shape and mark off three blocks on one of their islands in that configuration. They could freely rotate it, flip it, mirror it, but they have to keep the uh, same basic configuration. So this player, for example, they might mark off one, two, three here. And maybe this player over here marks off one, two, three here. So one thing you'll notice is that all the game, even though the game's card based, it these cards essentially work as whiteboards. You could dry erase, write on them with the dry erase markers, and then erase them. So that's a kind of novel feature. Um, but you'll notice. So, like I said, the goal is to essentially complete all the blocks in this island. When you do that, you'll be able to set this card aside, draft another one, and then you'll score the points for this island at the end of the game. You always have the option, if you don't want to take this shape or you can't fit it into your block, to just cross off any one single square on any island to do that instead. So you'll notice this player here, they marked off this coin. Whenever they do that, the player will then mark off the first coin uh, space that's available on their score pad like this. Each one of these is going to be worth a point at the end of the game. And then you'll also get a bonus for completing the rows. So let's say this player marks off their fourth one. What you'll do is you'll look at this round tracking card. And the six is available. That's the, the highest number of points. That player will basically mark that off. So the next player will only get five points. And they'll get six points for completing that row. Put a six in there. So at the end of the game, each of these will be worth one point. Plus any additional bonuses that you get for completing rows. Once all of those six are gone, no, no additional points for completing your rows, just the points for the coins themselves. The uh, second thing, which this player actually did over here, is you notice uh, under this block here, there's another X. So if you ever cross out an X, you could immediately cross out another block anywhere on either the island that you're working on there or your other island. So this player could even, for example, not saying this would be the best move, use their extra move to mark off this one and then maybe mark off this here. So they would get a coin here and then that coin that they marked off here, they would get two coins for that. Um, so you can see there's some very light uh, ability to make combos. After all players are done doing their marks, you'll just flip over the next card and then mark off something again. So here, you know, they got a 
block. This player might do those four, which would get them a coin. And this player here might go one, two, three, four, something like this. And then let me just show you the uh, third type of special um, icon on the uh, board or on the uh, player cards is this tree. So this player has to mark off two things. If they mark off this tree, they'll get a tree scoring. So on your score sheet, you have these this area here with four spots where the trees can be scored. Whenever you mark off the uh, tree, you'll get a point for your tree, plus any trees that are available or that are present in the row of cards waiting to be drafted. So this one here has one, this one here has one, plus the one that is on that player's uh, player board, they would get three points that they would write in here. So they would get three points. Um, you'll notice there's only four spaces. If ever you mark off a fifth tree, you don't get any bonus points. So it's only the first four trees that you mark off individually that get you your points. So uh, you can't block other players from getting these points, unlike the bonus points for getting the uh, coin rows. So the game will go until you flipped over seven of these eight cards. Then you'll simply shuffle those up and move on to round two. Um, again, if a player ever completes an entire island, they just set that card aside. It will score at the end of the game, and then they could draft another one, and the uh, row will refill. So, essentially then, at the end of the fourth round, you're going to just do your final scoring. So the way that this works, I should first show you that there are some cards that have on them bonuses. So this one here will give you eight points, for a gray, um, for the gray island itself, plus two points for every other uh, purple island that you complete. So there are certain ones that have those symbols on it, like this one is 14 points for itself, plus one for every green island that you complete. In any case, at the end of the game, incomplete islands are worth zero. You'll tally up then your scorecard based on this. Um, each individual coin is worth one, plus any bonuses that you've gotten for completed rows your points for your trees that you scored over the course of the game, up to four times you could do that, your points for your completed islands, plus your points for those bonus seals that I just explained. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Okay, so that is silver and gold. And what do I think about the game? I think that's like most games that Phil Walker Harding has designed. It's a very well-designed, cleanly designed family game with very straightforward rules, plays very... Uh, um, obviously, uh, players are going to grok what they're trying to do right away, but at the same time, it does have a number of interesting decisions to make over the course of the game. Um, of course, there's a luck element, like any game of this sort, uh, but it plays so cleanly and so quickly that, that you're very rarely going to feel like you lost because of bad luck. Um, something that's great about the game, as opposed to a lot of these games that are, you know, rolling rights or card flip and write games is that you are going to be accomplishing goals over the course of the game. Uh, every, you're going to be completing generally over a, a, a game, maybe eight or so of, of those cards, so you'll f have a small sense of accomplishment over the course of the game. So there's a, if you, despite the fact that it plays in about 15 to 20 minutes, there's a real sense of progression, and that's a real strength. Um, I will say that it does at the same time expose some of the shortcomings of most roll and write games or you know card flip and write games in so far as uh, what you're doing here is largely a solitaire experience even though you're playing with a group of pl other players every player is going to be drawing the uh, same shape onto their board uh, so that's great in terms of game length simultaneous play but in terms of interactivity the game's rather low uh, in in those terms. Uh, you can draft cards out of that row that another player might want perhaps. You could race to complete your coin rows. So there's some very mild forms of interactivity, but uh, it isn't great in that respect. Again, it's, I think, forgivable because of the length of the game, but at the same time, um, it does give us some of the strategy of something like another of this designer's games, Baron Park, which is a tile laying game, uh, similar sort of, you know, manipulate different geometric shapes into a grid uh, game that came out a few years ago, one of the better family games of recent years. Um, and in that game, because it is uh, tile based and you're going to be selecting tiles, um, you essentially have 
a drafting element of that game where you can deny other players pieces and that becomes a real strategic component of that game that's really missing here um, and I think it's a little bit worse off as a result uh, another element of that game um, is that you're racing towards completing goals and I think that that is something that really could have been implemented here that feels like a mild missed opportunity although there is that one goal of just trying to be the first person to complete um, those rows of coins to get the most points from that bonus uh, the Baron Park game had more personal goals that you were trying to accomplish so um, these are you know not necessarily shortcomings. It's a it's a lighter game. It's uh, an easier game. It's just something that as I've played a lot of these roll and rate games recently, there've been a lot of them released. Um, I realize you know to a certain degree that getting a game that you know has individual player sheets that plays so quickly often does come with sacrifices. That being said, this is probably one of the better ones of the genre. Um, I would encourage you to check it out. Uh, just know what you're getting into. Um, it won't be a substitute for a um, more complete uh, tile laying game. Um, again, something like Baron Park would be something that I definitely prefer. But for what it is, Silver and Gold is quite good. So, those are my thoughts on the game, and thank you for watching.